Okay, um, let's get started. I call this meeting to order. We are now in a special meeting for the purposes of holding a public hearing on school choice. Uh, let me just uh, remind everybody that is we are required by law to vote on school choice every year. And our policy file JFBB, it is a policy of the school district not to admit non-resident students under the terms and conditions of the in-district, inter-district school choice law. The decision must be reaffirmed annually prior to June 1st by a vote of the school committee following a public hearing. So right now we are doing the public hearing. Is there anybody here to speak with regards to the Arlington Public Schools participation in the intradistrict school choice program. Seeing none, I conclude the public hearing. Do I hear a motion? So move. Uh, <laughs> the motion. <laughs> uh, the motion would be uh, to uh, reaffirm our, our policy JFBB and not to participate in school choice. Yeah. Motion by Mr. Hainer, second by Ms. Starks. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's a unanimous vote. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn this special meeting. So moved. Moved by Mr. Hainer, second by Ms. Starks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, uh, unanimous vote, I so declare it. Uh, it is now 6.35. We are going to open the regular meeting. Um, the first item is public participation. Do we have a list? Ms. Fitzgerald, is there, there is there a first name on the list? Miriam Stein. Miriam Stein. Let me remind everybody that we uh, allocate uh, no more than three minutes per speaker, and we do not uh, customarily comment back to speakers in public participation. Ms. Stein. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm here representing the Superintendent's Diversity Advisory Committee. We meet with the superintendent every four to six weeks. We want to thank her for her openness and for her time. We collaborate with the superintendent in a variety of ways. One is to increase the number of applicants of color for professional positions. And among other things, that includes an annual diversity coffee social for interested candidates of color. We talk about retaining teachers and administrators of color in the school system, about expanding cultural competence in the district, and we discuss ways that the school experience for METCO students can be enhanced. The members of the Superintendent's Diversity Advisory Committee include nine community members, some of which are here tonight. Do you want to raise your hands? We have representatives from the Vision 2020 Diversity Task Group, of which I'm one, the Arlington Human Rights Commission, Arlington's Equal Opportunity Commission, the Arlington Martin Luther King Jr. Celebration Committee, and our program of today's students and tomorrow's teachers known as TSTT. We also have two school committee members, Bill Hainer and Judd Pierce, and um, Arlington Public School Administrators, Rob Spiegel and Margaret Cradle Thomas, the METCO Director. Some of our members couldn't be here tonight but wanted to. We appreciate Dr. Brody's invitation to contribute our suggestions to the draft of the district goals for the upcoming school year. And we thank her for including some of our thoughts in her proposal to you. I've given you all a sheet um, which includes in, um, I, I gave that out to everyone, um, which includes in bold and underlined uh, Dr. Bodie's um, suggestions in her draft, and there are a few other things in caps 
that we were hoping would be included as well. The um, big item that um, we'd like to talk about tonight, and Pearl Morrison would like to do that, is the fact that METCO is celebrating its 50th anniversary in 2016, and we think it would be really important for the school district to acknowledge that, and Pearl will speak to that. Okay, okay. next, uh, let me just make an announcement that before we go for, uh, further. Uh, I, as school committee chairman, I have, uh, go ahead, you can sit down. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, I, I have a double commitment and I need to go and represent the committee at the uh, Touchdown Club Ostergren Award, so I'm gonna pass the gavel on to uh, our vice chair who okay. will continue the meeting. I will return as soon as I am done conveying our best wishes to, to that group. Okay, great. Well, Thanks. Have fun. Thank you. Okay, so next on the list is uh, Pearl Morrison. Good evening, committee. <clears throat> Superintendent Bodie, thank you for allowing us to come before you. I think my major concern this evening, I know it is, is in regards to METCO. Um, I lived in Arlington 50 years ago when METCO was invited to uh, participate in the Arlington Public Schools. The school committee voted to invite METCO to the Arlington Public Schools so they may savor an exceptionally honorable outstanding education. So I want to bring to your attention at this 50th anniversary, my wish is that you would include this uh, additional item, item six, is my wish. Item six reads, 2016 marks the 50th anniversary of the Allington Public School invitation to the METCO program to become a part of the educational community. We will continue to examine and improve the practices and procedures that guarantee unfettered access to all academic and extracurricular resources that ensure a school experience that fulfills, that fulfills the promises and expectations of these learners. We did give them promises they come to us with expectations. My wish is that this become item six. However, I understand there may be some, uh, there may be some pushback on that. But at least I would like for the school committee to do something this year across the board, across the grades, across curricula, to acknowledge the um, program that the METCO students now, at, at the same time saying that, I know in our heart, we want the METCO students to be considered Arlington public school students, but perception is reality. We refer to them, I know, as METCO students. We have a METCO coordinator, we have a METCO bus, we have these things. So therefore, that's reality. So my desire is to include this as an item, but at the very least, for those of us around this horseshoe and the um, uh, citizens and residents of Arlington to have some recognition out. You know, uh, the superintendent knows that her committee, her advisory committee, we do not ask anything of her that we are not willing to help with. So we stand available to be of some assistance. Um, I've asked uh, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Creedle Thompson, if she would help me to search out past students and the Martin Luther King program of 2017. Is this 2007? What 16. is it? 16. <laughs> I think I'm not that far ahead. 2016, I am working on a program just devoted to METCO. Now, the other thing which I passed over, but on item two, you'll see in caps uh, our suggestion. It says, uh, we recommend additional wording, indicated here in caps, to the current goals that reads, students will receive increased support 
for their social emotional needs in recognition of the interconnection between the social emotional needs of students and academic challenges of the curriculum. And we are adding, in particular, all students, including those in the MECO program, will receive equal resources to support their participation in educational learning, academic support, and extracurriculum activities. There are some things often that present, present themselves and the students are not able to fully participate in those uh, resources that we have in Arlington. So that is my participation in this evening. And I thank you in advance for any efforts that you're going to put forward. I know you will put it forward because it's the Arlington Public School System way. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morrison. Uh, next on the list is Barbara Boltz. Hi, I think most of you know me, I'm Barbara Boltz. And in addition to being on the Superintendent's Diversity Advisory Committee, I am a member of the Town Manager's Equal Opportunity Advisory Committee. And uh, while that committee cannot uh, do anything to affect the schools, we do try to keep track of what each other are doing and, and, and uh, make this, uh, the, these goals for the town. Uh, tonight I'd like to talk a little bit about <coughs> uh, goal two of the goal of the 2014, no, 15, 16 goals, uh, the cultural competency. And you will see in item three, we were recommending uh, <coughs> that you add uh, the words you will see uh, underlined and capitalized so that it would read, teachers will be provided professional development in cultural competence to enhance their capacity to recognize, understand, and address the emotional needs of our diverse student enrollment. Classrooms all across the country are becoming increasingly diverse. And National Education Association President Dennis Van Roekel uh, has noted that education with the educators with the skills, knowledge, and attitudes to value the diversity among students will contribute to an educational system designed to serve all students well. It's a key factor. Uh, this is not f uh, a quote from, from the president, the, the previous sentence was. It's a key factor in enabling educators to be effective and with students from cultures other than their own. Uh, educators have to recognize their own cultural identity and then recognize the cultural identity of others and be able to uh, interact with students at, at their level. And so it's, it's, I know that there is some cultural competency, at least I believe there is requirement in some of the recertification uh, that teachers have to go through, but that's not enough. We need to have it written into our goals so that all the teachers uh, re receive this, this training and are able to, to interact with the students at this level. So again, I do, we all appreciate being able to come here for the public participation and uh, thank all of you and we thank Dr. Bodhi for her help in, uh, in getting these things together. And I hope that you will uh, approve the, the uh, changes that, that we are recommending. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Boltz. Um, next on the list is Alan Schwamm, is that? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, good, okay. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so next on the list is, um, Huh, my, can't, my ability to read, maybe. Begins with a C. No, we're not, we're not oh, okay. <laughs> Molly Lyonson. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> I'll speak for both of us. Uh, I know you've met Molly before. <laughs> Corbo. Um, my name's Neva Corbo Hudak, and I am a Stratton parent. I have a son who is currently in second grade, and a daughter who is very enthusiastic about starting kindergarten in the fall. Um, and I've communicated via email with some of you, and uh, I appreciate your time and your attention. Uh, I'm here tonight particularly to thank the facilities uh, subcommittee for scheduling a school committee special meeting on Tuesday, May 26th at Stratton, um, that I and my fellow parents uh, are looking forward to further discussion around the Stratton renovation and the plans for the relocation of students during the 2016-2017 school year. And just mostly here to say thank you very much for your responsiveness and your attention to this issue. We appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Okay, uh, next on the list is uh, Lenin Ramachandran. Ramachandran, yeah. thanks. That's okay. Thank you. Hey, good evening. I am Lenin Ramachandran. I am not sure whether I can talk about this or here or not, but anyway, I wanted to talk to the school committee. Um, I am here for the kindergarten admission for my daughter, Mega Ramasamy. Mega was born on October 17, 2010. She will be just 47 days younger for kindergarten admission for the year 2015 and 16. My wife, Lakshmi Sondra Pandian, have a PhD in nuclear physics and work as a scientist at RMD Incorporation, Watertown. And I am Lenin Ramachandran, have a master degree with engineering and works um, for GV Aviation at Lynn as an engineer. We have been in the state of Massachusetts for last 10 years and live in Arlington for the past three years. Mega is our only child and we always spend considerable amount of time on her. Mega, was, Mega has been in daycare center since she turned one year old and attends pre-K since September 2014. She speaks in complete sentences in English and also can understand our native language Tamil. Though she prefers to converse in English we, she can speak simple sentences in Tamil too. She knows to read and write English alphabets, both cases. She can read and write numbers from one to 100. She can do simple addition in maths. Her motor skills are good. In addition to being a good listener, she is pretty tall girl for her age, with her height being at 90, 90th percentile. We seriously think that she is ready for kindergarten for the year 2015-16 and she may be bored if she stays in pre-K for another year and waste her time in this precious age. She is just 47 days younger for kindergarten admission. Um, I don't understand. She is going to be just 47 days younger for this year, but for the next year, she is going to be 10 months older. So I already um, sent a mail to the committee, but and the admission has been refused, but I once again, I came here to talk this issue to you guys. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your remarks. Um, so uh, the school committee doesn't make the policy, but we always welcome any, uh, we don't make these kinds of decisions, but we always welcome anything that you want to talk to us about. Yeah, no um, problem, yeah. <laughs> and I think that is it for the public participation. Is there anyone? Oh. So is but, there I'm any? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, do, uh, the pu so public participation is allows any member of the public to come before us for three minutes and say anything they want, which is, at, you know, at the beginning of the meetings. Um, but we don't generally engage in a sort of back and forth or any policy making during that period. But we always welcome um, any anything you want to say to us. So, so, but, what, so if, if I want some but, answer, where can I, what can I do? So actually, I, I, I'm actually not sure about the policy. What, what can we, so I think what usually in, happens in, in these cases? In previous years, 
I believe this has gone to a subcommittee, and I'm just not sure which subcommittee. Okay. Is it policy oh. that would take this up? Okay. Yeah, we, we've taken this up. Policy. Have we taken it up as a policy. general policy or individual cases? Yes, individual cases. Indi oh, we have. Okay. I didn't realize yes. that we did. Okay. So um, our suggestion is um, that we would probably have you go or contact the head of the Policies and Procedures Which Subcommittee. Judson Pierce. Okay. Right. Um, and and then we'll Judd can contact okay. yeah. so do we need a motion to refer that we need no okay no. okay yeah. so Judd so maybe Feel you free can to email me Judd so maybe you can be in touch yeah. their information yeah. so is much. Yeah, their, their information is on here so you have a copy so thank be in you. touch with him yep thank you so much okay for thank you okay so um, so is there anyone else here for public yes. partici participation? Okay. So the next item on the agenda is um, Thompson. Um, Thompson third grade town meeting video. And this is our own Bill Hainer. Very generously donated his time to uh, help some third graders at Thompson understand our town meeting in Arlington. It was great. They actually showed this at town meeting one night, um, right before town meeting started, and it got a rousing uh, applause. And uh, it looks—it's really cute. I just want to say it's the teachers and the Let kids that did this. So we had our town hall, um, our mock town meeting. So this is the third time that we've done this. Um, Bill and I planned this out a while ago, and. Um, Laura McKenney has been doing this with me for um, all three years. Siobhan had shared with me that, that it was part of their curriculum and getting involved in uh, this aspect of it. And I like history. And uh, as the teacher, I, it, very spontaneous. The more excitement the children present, the more excited that you get, and the easier it is to do all the work. So first, Mr. Hainer came in and explained the different elements of a warrant article and that we have to really think about different pieces. He kind of prepares them for what would a warrant article look like um, and what kinds of issues are brought up in warrant articles. I asked them what types of things would you be, think people should do in the towns. So we put it up on the board, we brainstorm, and little by little I asked them, uh, do you think, how much money would this cost? Do we have enough money? What would you like not to have if we got, got rid of it? And little by little, they understand, they learn and understand that although there are great ideas and things, it won't help everybody, and it might cost too much money. They were extremely excited. When we walked in, we had parents set up at tables so the children all knew their precinct number, and they had mm -hmm. to go in and they had to register at their precinct table. And so they were checked off, and then they came in, got settled, sat down. You know, they're all in the middle of town hall, so this is for some of them their first opportunity to see town hall, and it's a beautiful building. And then um, Bill started the process off. I'm going to ask you to raise your right hand, and you're going to repeat after me. <laughs> I swear then to sat down, and I invited uh, the first person to present their article, and they did it. We declare that Arlington should have an animal shelter. We, the children of Arlington, have seen animals that are hurt, neglected, and hungry. We believe there should be a, a place in Arlington where these animals can be taken care of. We believe Arlington should provide money for staff and supplies and a building with several rooms and a yard for this animal shelter. Thank you. <laughs> I asked them for the, to be seconded. They did. And we went back and forth, those for and those against. My name is Yvonne Novato. I'm from Precinct 2, and I think there shouldn't be an animal, an uh, animal shelter because my my dad was once hurt by uh, a wild wolf. <laughs> Suddenly, did not like that. <laughs> Hello, my name is Elsom Cleus, and I live on precinct one and i think that we should have animal shelters because dogs need attention and they can need help crossing the streets because they will get run over thank you when we finished i asked if there were any new information and when there wasn't any we had a voice vote first which wasn't clear 
And we had tellers, just like we have a town meeting, and I explained that, and they counted the vote, and each article passed. Mm -hmm. Other years, I felt like we had sat on opposite sides, so it was kind of already decided what side you were on for each argument, but the children really mixed in together, which I thought was great, because you could be sitting next to somebody who had a completely different opinion than you, or was from a different class and came up with a different idea, and that was okay. The thing that I've noticed with my kids is they have a lot of confidence in themselves with raising different issues and debating points with each other, and that's grown, I think, through this process. In the beginning, they were a little more reticent to share their opinions, some of them, and now they're they're all doing it because they realize that they can disagree with somebody else in the class and they can do it in a respectful way. Except for their age. I think every one of them could have qualified as a town meeting member. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just Very want to add, a lot of them came prepared. The teachers did a phenomenal job in preparing them. They had little support cards and stuff. But once the debate got going, some of them got spontaneous. And this one particular question, I could see this little girl here, and I, I, I said, I called on her, and she got up and she says, I want you all to know, the cats and dogs are doing fine in this town. Don't vote for this article. <laughs> and she sat down. So it, she really got nice. into it. It wasn't prepared. So I mean, I, I really want to say this could not, I mean, it's an easy idea to come up, but without the teachers and the parents and the kids and all, it, it just is a wonderful thing to do it in civics. So they were great. Thank you. Yeah, great. Awesome. Thanks for sharing it. Okay, so I'm actually unclear about the next item agenda, the district goals. Are we presenting right. them? Or? Right, let, me, let me talk about Okay, this. great. All right. Several years ago, just as some background information on this, the school committee worked um, in conjunction with the school department to define overarching goals for the Arlington Public Schools. And there are four of them. And they pretty much are sort of guiding goals um, that direct our activities in the district. And these goals are on our district website. Every year, we identify st some strategic initiatives to further us in achieving those, those goals. And there, as I said, there are four of them. And we have, in the past years, have taken this, had the process of developing the, the district goals has been really more of a l summer, l early fall um, initiative. On the other hand, that puts us uh, uh, approving district goals much further into the actual school year, um, which actually probably doesn't make that much sense. And, and particularly now when we have the new educator evaluation system in which everything has a tie back to these goals, it's important that we first say what the district goals are for the next year. Um, from that, um, Schools will look at their own goals, which tie back to those district goals, and then teachers, as well as administrators, define their goals for next year. And uh, with our agreement with um, our, our teachers' union, we are, have agreed to complete the district goals for next year by the close of school. Okay. So, what what we have done in the past, and this has just been a general practice um, even before we've sort of changed the timeline on, on this, is that we've looked, uh, we've had some discussions at, with administrators and have solicited opini opinions from other groups as well as the, the, um, my committee has so eloquently expressed tonight for what the district goals will be for next year. And or I should say the strategic initiatives. And generally, there's been about three to five in each one of the goals. Um, and so what you have tonight is the first draft of these goals because as we move forward, we only have, right, unless, unless we choose to have another committee, uh, school committee meeting, we have two more meetings. Mm -hmm. So tonight is the sort of the, the, the first discussion on these goals and a presentation of them. Get your thoughts, see if there's things that you would rather delete, add, and then what, what I would do is incorporate those and we'll bring them back to the next meeting for a further discussion 
And then finally, on the June 11th meeting, we would take a vote, or I should, you would take a vote, right. on the adoption of these strategic initiatives for next year. So are we having a retreat like we did last year with school committee? Um, we have not planned one yet. That's why I want to get this, this moving forward tonight. And just, and just, we can, this is the first time you've seen them. Um, they were in your packet on Novus earlier this week. You've heard the um, the committee, the superintendent's committee, advisory committee talk about some additions. And in actually, in two instances, they've already been incorporated into mm -hmm. uh, the goals. Now, what you have at your place tonight, because I think it's hard to, you, you, don't, you really can't do a split screen very well. Um, I put a paper copy of last year's goals so you can see the um, either the repetition or the extension of what we've had last year. Because one of the things that we have found with our strategic initiatives for this current year is that in, in living through with the initiatives, it's going to be necessary to continue them into another year. First Amendment, right. They're much more, they proved to be a little bit more complex uh, than first anticipated, and we will we'll do that, which you'll see in a couple instances. We have put these up on the, on the, since the people that are sitting here, unless you, oh, there was enough copies for people to have? Maybe not. But at least we'll have them up here on the, on the um, uh, screen. Now since uh, our committee is here tonight and I've already asked for some additions, this may be a good place to start, even though it's a little out of order in terms of um, what we have here in the initiatives. What, what would be your preference? Do you want to just go through them, go, each goal sequentially, or take anything out of order? So, I, I mean, I, I sort of feel like we need more time to process it, but what, um, Mr. Well, Haynard, what do you? I, I mean, the two ways we could do this. We could individually send you stuff, but I think if, I personally value hearing what other people have to say mm -hmm. and input like that, and we are a little bit short in time. That, this happens every year because this has to be done at this time. Just a thought, if, uh, if the body, that we take each strategic initiative, the, the, the goal itself I think is fairly solid from, where we, from my perspective, but each strategic initiative one at a time and, then, and get input from each of us at that Th that's time. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, like that. I have, I have to say that I, I hadn't thought that we'd be talking about it today because I was assuming that we'd be doing a retreat. I mean, I'm, I'm, all new, I'm new to this, so, but that's what we did last year, so that we were we just did. sort of being oh. presented with it. I agree. Why don't we just go through each one? Why don't you just talk through each one? We'll talk through yeah. each one. Sure. You should just join in if just you want Just your, them. your okay, impressions. We, yeah. we can talk to um, our chair yeah. as to whether we're going to schedule um, a retreat to work on these specifically. Okay. And I'd be interested in, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry. No, I'd good. be interested in knowing, can, can I, what was, what's the rationale behind, you know, why, why are these, because a school district this size has hundreds of goals, dozens of goals. So why are these five, why, so just tell us why these five are the ones you pick. Well, I'm when glad you go through them. I will. Okay. And, and I, I'm glad you pointed that out. There are a lot of things that we do as initiatives next, we're doing this year and we'll certainly do next year that are not represented on here. Right. So the question is why these and not other goals? All right. Okay. All right. Um, the first one here is actually sort of a continuation of an emphasis we've had this year, which is continue to make progress toward action plans and outcomes that emphasize inquiry and experiential learning in order to promote student engagement and a deeper understanding of the curriculum. That is, a, as you can see, was <coughs> one of our strategic initiatives this year, and we have done a number of uh, a number of initiatives toward achieving this, but it is something that is not a year goal. This is something that's going to need many years. In fact, the idea of this particular initiative is that this is something that we would always be striving toward. So whether we keep it as a, as a particular initiative beyond next year is something we would need to, to talk about. You know, for example, in the high school this year, we have, um, we call it, a, it's, it used to be called the wood shop, but now we call it the maker lab, which is where we do a lot of project-based works that 
has uh, that's interdisciplinary, where students have the opportunity to to make things. Um, we certainly have a lot of initiatives where students participate using technology to do be creative in in, in developing their own learning. There are and this is something that we've talked about at different times this year of examples of where we're doing this. But this is, this is a strong, um, uh, strongly supported initiative by administrators and, and to move forward. And I don't know if um, Dr. Chesson would like to add any comments on this one. Uh, this is certainly an initiative that we also is echoed in our tech program at the middle school and um, something we hope to expand to the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade at the middle school all uh, build uh, rockets. They, um, you know, do other kinds of engineering and, and, and it also is echoed in our engineering as elementary program at the middle, at the uh, elementary school. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Phil Hanner. Okay. Sorry. Uh, sorry. What you've just done has clarified the, this particular thing. Right now, it's, it's, to me, I have an idea. You've talked about it and stuff, and we've heard about it. But putting examples of those with this in parentheses maybe at the end, because this is going to be on our web page for other people to see what our goals are. So an example of what you, what you just shared with us, uh, to me, would be good for beneficial as promoting our programs and stuff and our goals. Okay. Thank you. I have one question. Yeah. So is, and is this, this so, uh, goal one, did you call me? <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you, um, Dr. Alessandri yeah. right. is next. Okay. Okay. Sorry, yeah. oh, okay, so my question is as much to my fellow members as it is to the superintendent. So I'm confused again, are different goals and aren't some of these supposed to be SMART goals, which means they have measurable outcomes. Mm -hmm. And I kind of thought this was where we're supposed to be seeing the measurable outcomes and this is actually an umbrella question. I, there's a number of these that I don't really see measurable outcomes on, mm -hmm. and so I'm wondering about that. Mm -hmm. what, you're, what you're asking is, can these be put into uh, more of a SMART goal model? Um, so the, the issue is, and this is something we have done to retreat, is what, what would constitute evidence for accomplishment of this particular initiative, or if not accomplishment, because I don't see this as a, a, a particular initiative that has a beginning and an end. It's, it's, it's really an emphasis in terms of what we're doing, generally speaking, in, in education in this district. But I think that it's important if it's a SMART goal that we have a chance to talk about what would be the evidence you would be looking for. And these are the kinds of things that I would like to have feedback on. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Thielen? I was, I was going to ask two things. One is what Kersey asked, which is about, you know, measuring the goal. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is, do, do each of these apply to every level of the district or are yes. they? Okay, they do. Okay, so they're K mm -hmm. through 12. So, okay, it's not more of a high school goal or secondary school goal? Okay. No, it's, it's a K-12, pre-K-12. Pre Actually, it's not, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Because it might it might be good for us to see, you know, how it's gonna how the goals gonna be played out at each at each of our levels, mm -hmm. K through twelve, pre K through through five, middle school, high school. Mm -hmm. How's it gonna happen? Yes. Um, this okay. year, let me just this might help a little bit too. Um, when we invited the one of the clusters, the the one to one cluster at the at Addison Middle School to come and present. I think that would be a, a good example of the kind of work that was done this year to further this initiative. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and that was it, a good presentation. It's really taking, what we're, taking education in a, in a, really changing it and having the students be creators and, and deeply involved in their own in, in inquiry to, for their own learning. Mr. Piss. Thank you. Um, while I like the spirit behind Goal 1 and I like mm -hmm. that it's a continuation of our efforts in previous years, I don't think it necessarily can be or should be a strategic initiative if it's something that we're going to be doing every year. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'd love to see the district goals pared down 
because I think in conversations I've had anecdotally with staff, principals, I, I, I think the sense is that we're, we're, our goals are, are too, too much mm. for a district that is changing in a lot of ways through state and federal mandate. In other words, I would like to see these pared down and if these things are seemingly continuations, they're not strategic initiatives for that given year. They're more or less overarching, part of our overarching plan, our overarching goals. Um, so that's just my general response to the, to the draft. What I would say to that is um, by having a strategic initiative, at least for the two years, and maybe what we do going forward is to incorporate it, add in the overall, but it gives um, uh, of some emphasis to the fact that for, for professional development, for school improvement goals that are aligned with this. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't disagree with you that if this is going to be um, something that is going to be core to our work, then going forward, maybe even next year, I don't know, but going forward, having it as part of the, the overarching. But I'd like for, I think this would be generally felt by all the administrators who would discuss this. In fact, we had a lot of discussion on this, that they would like to see this um, actually in language in the strategic initiatives next year. So I'm, I'm just, um, before getting to Bill, I'm conscious about timing. So we have half an hour devoted to this, of which 15 minutes is taken up. Um, and I'm wondering what people feel, do we want to continue? So going by them line by line, or is there another sort of way that we should go? Should we devote well, a meeting to it? Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask since my, the committee is here, um, if we would like to discuss, um, there were three things that basically had been their suggestions and the issue of cultural competency has been included in the type of professional development that we would be um, offering going forward next year. Um, also change the language on in goal four. It's just, it's a, um, it's a little bit more descriptive of what we're going to do in, this would be in goal the operations or, communication right number one so that is dedicated to enhancing expanding action plans for recruiting <coughs> hiring and retaining so it's a lot stronger statement than we had last year but what is certainly measurable in this uh, is whether we are going to be able to increase the number of hires um, for from this year's baseline next year so there's something very measurable here, and, and you had a report on that in the fall. Right. Uh, Mr. Hainer. I, because time is, is restrictive, but also time as far as the amount of meetings we have, uh, I agree with what Mr. Pierce said as far as collaborate. A lot of these things in here are definitely important. They should be uh, laid out for everybody, but a lot of them are mandates, uh, and we're going forward. Uh, the professional development is something we need to do. We've done, we've done it well. Uh, we always add more. Um, later on, we're going to be talking about the 2020 uh, survey, and, and part of it is questions about the communication with the community and stuff. On goal number four, we've been talking about the dashboard, and this year we've been talking about the web page and stuff. I think they're both related in that communication part. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see smart goal, specific goals that can be done within a year. And then this is a full discussion that may require a retreat, but all the strategic initiatives, they're important too. I appreciate that, but they, and you do them, and you do them well with, your staff, with the staff and everything. But specific goals that go with our, that can be done within a year that we select and that are, are defined as SMART goals, because we spent that whole, whole day uh, learning what SMART goals were, we worked them out, and we've seemed to have forgotten that collectively. That, that's not, uh, d d we, we own that responsibility as well in the long run, so with few exceptions. Thank, yeah, I know, I'm speaking for myself. Thank you. So um, actually, just how to proceed in the next few minutes, should we focus um, right now on the goals that relate to what was presented by the subcommittee and then table the discussion of the other goals at this point? Because we won't get through everything, there's just no way. No. So there's just a question of what to sort of do tonight versus what to to another time. Could we Which do way? feedback to Dr. Bodie and 
through Karen communicate to us okay. to, to prepare a document for our next meeting. In so, other words, individually give feedback. So is your suggestion we give feedback, but, but there's no group discussion necessarily? And, and whatever and back through Karen to us as individuals. I don't know. Well, no. Yeah, you know, these, are, you know, these are district goals that impact 5,000 kids, so yeah. the school committee yeah. has to have some discussion. I, think, I, I, I mean, I would, I would value the retreat, frankly. Yeah. So I, think, um, I think just general sense comments of the committee. We don't have to go line by line. Line by line. I, yes. Okay. So, right. Maybe, maybe Kathy can present for five or six minutes, okay. and then every single person can just comment. Sounds great. Okay. <clears throat> let's do that. All right. Let, let's, talk, let's talk about goal one. Um, well, the goal one is about student achievement for those that are listening um, and talking about whether we have rigorous, comprehensive, data-driven. Um, those are, it's a very broad statement. But what are the kinds of particular things we're really trying to emphasize? And honestly, working on this kind of inquiry experiential learning is really important to us moving forward. That's why I want to call it out. Um, we also feel that it's very important, it was actually brought up this evening, that we, we need to support our students in um, the, the, for the social emotional needs. And um, because, it is, because that can be a real impediment to learning. And so what kinds of things are we going to be putting in place? And, and in fact, I originally took this out, to be perfectly candid here, and when we brought it to the administrators, they said, no, no, no. We really need that back in there because they themselves at the building level are planning and this planning some initiatives next year which this particular strategic initiative gives um, a little bit more gravitas to. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to think about it in terms of the school improvement plans in terms of this is what we're, some of we're saying it's really important to focus on and if you're going to have some initiatives this is links to the district goals. So keep in mind, we've got these threads that are going through all it, and we're trying to have everything link up. Um, so the other one is in gaining college readiness for experiences outside the traditional classroom. The high school, this is actually a much more of a high school um, uh, uh, strategic initiative. In re They've made a lot of strides and want to keep this front and center in terms of the kinds of work that they're doing, whether it's the internship program, um, the dual enrollment programs, the Coursera types of programs that we have, that again, it's, it links to what they want to do as a school. Now the other two are things that I think we do have to have some discussion about. You'll notice that there are some language changes here. Maybe you maybe didn't pick it up, but I'll point it out for you. That, before it was a very rigid goal. You make the 75 for your PPI, you make, you make the 51 or higher for your SGP. What we're s suggesting is that we really put that as a making, making progress toward. Now, there was some discussion at the table last year whether we even have this in here, and there was discussion was centered on uh, whether that's something we want to do if in fact we're changing to park next year because that equivalency mm -hmm. to MCAS may not exist. Mm -hmm. So that's something to think about going forward. Mm -hmm. So those are the main ideas of goal one. In goal two, as a district, we're very committed to professional development and we're committed in, in, very, in er different areas. And uh, one of the areas, of course, is uh, providing time to teachers and administrators to, um, for the new educator evaluation system. We've been taking this in, in, in steps over the last couple of years and we're still going to devote time toward um, this endeavor. Excuse but we also me. have professional I'm development. Sorry. Excuse me for a second. I thought we were going to respond at the end of each goal presentation. Uh, no, no. I think, I think we want a five-minute presentation of everything oh, and then sorry. we'll all respond. Thank I think you. Is it? Yes. You okay. Uh, we want to provide um, more explicit instruction and modeling of how you use data to improve instruction. And it's not to say that we haven't done that and we have been doing it. Again, it's 
th this is the tension between what is a SMART goal, which is something that you can wrap up in a red bow, you've done it for the year, it's done, and there's some things in here that might fall into that category. But the truth of the matter for a school system is that it doesn't really quite work like that because you really are, it's an iterative process and a growth process. Just like we think about uh, us as, as educators and, and what's happening, we are in a growth mentality. So some of, so by putting these in as strategic initiatives, what we're saying is these still remain f um, things that we want to focus on and we're, we're going to do, we're going to sort of up the game or up the initiative in terms of more work, more emphasis on, emphasis on it next year. Um, so there's certainly in professional development, there is one particular initiative that is, we've talked about this table, but I, I think that holds a tremendous amount of promise for this district. And that is uh, professional development around teacher leadership. We're growing. Uh, the leadership capabilities of our staff and doing it in a number of ways. In fact, uh, one way we've been doing it for years is, is our mentoring program. It's important, but I think we're calling it out a little bit more even next year. In fact, um, Dr. Chesson has written a grant for this purpose. Uh, I don't know if you want to just mention a little bit about that. It's been funded by the Arlington Educational Foundation and we um, already had one meeting and we'll be having a f uh, two follow-up meetings uh, Monday and June 4th. So there'll be very specific things that will be undertaken next year that we did not do this year. All right. Then we also have to have, um, uh, again, professional development uh, for a whole lot of different competencies, whether it's technology competencies, competencies stu students' social emotional needs, cultural competency, what, uh, which was mentioned tonight, and ability to differentiate instruction. Those remain important. Um, we also have um, the sh sheltered um, English immersion, and we also next year. Uh, thanks to the connections Dr. Chesson made with Leslie mm -hmm. and our director of ELL, Carla Bruzese, we are going to offer a course next year through Leslie, um, actually it's multiple courses, so that, it's, that a teacher who took this, these courses that will be offered on weekends, uh, upon completion, would be able to be uh, certified in ELL. So it's going to be a great opportunity, and that now there is an ex example of one that we're going to do it, and at the end of the year, it'll be done. So mm -hmm. that's a good example of that one. All right. Um, so that, um, and then of course, we have we're going to continue continuing. Uh, while it's a state mandate about retail, it is something that we have financially committed to as well as a district in terms of supporting our teachers in that effort. So that's goal two. And in our resources, in infrastructure and educational environment, um, we are going to help the, support the town in the implementation of the facilities department. And there will be growth pains with it, and we're finding our way. But let's, call, let's, let's identify that this is going to take energy, time, <coughs> and commitment on our, uh, from the school department. Um, clearly, the whole relocation of Stratton is going to be very time intensive and um, involve quite a bit of thinking, planning, and meetings. We also are going to come back to you in the fall with the, the study on space uses because I think next year we need to have some very, very serious discussions. Not that they haven't been serious so far, but really there are some, some space <coughs> issues Excuse me. that are going to be um, that they're going to need some attention even the following year. So we have the technology plan that's continuing all the aspects of that. And then we have to, we want to keep, again, front and center that what we want to do is focus on the high school. And so if we, we are fortunate to be uh, invited into the next stage with MSBA, we will do that, and that will again require a lot of effort and focus from the district. 
And if we're not, then we've got to um, cry. <laughs> cry. But well, that will do too. It's a good but. response. <laughs> but we have to we have to yeah, redo the SOI. <laughs> And then the last goal, which is operations, communication, stakeholder engagement. Um, we talked about the first goal already. It has to do with um, uh, our diversity hiring and improving what we, where we are from this year. The dashboard of metrics. I think we've done some work this year, but we really need to uh, get that completed next year. Now, that would be one that I'd like to see completed as is the next one which is a redesign of our website you will see some improvements this june but it's not the wholesale change that uh, is going to need more time to be done and then uh, lastly this is sort of an interesting one which actually when we, we have Ms. brazil talk tonight I, I i wonder whether we want to move forward on this one i'm not quite sure yet because it was interesting to see in the vision 2020 uh, survey how do people want to have their get information about the school district? And it wasn't as high a percentage as yeah. I thought from, from about tweets and Facebook. Yeah. But we, we were thinking next year of having more of a digital presence. So this is something we might want to think about. So that's sort of a quick overview of where we're looking mm -hmm. to go next year. And I hear your comments. OK, great. Uh, Mr. Hainer. Uh, going back to goal one, I'd like you to consider putting in the, uh, under number two strategic, uh, the uh, info that the diversity committee uh, supported us and consider, I, I think number six just amplifies the, what they want in number two, but either one will cover <coughs> it. Um, going under goal two, the first strategic initiative, uh, just specifics again, uh, rather than vague language on that one. I think it would help. On two and three, uh, specifics, and on three on the goal two, a, a date, possibly. Um, Which one? Goal two. This is goal 1.2 or goal two? Pardon me? No, pardon me? You mean goal two, initiative two? Initiative three, thank you. Um, in concert with the A, we'll develop a, a, a date for that plan to be completed uh, on or about, something like that. Uh, number five and number six, we're doing it. Uh, I don't, I mean, the goal, I, I don't see the need for it to be there. It, it, there's, it, it, there's no requirement to force you to do it or remind you to do it. We're going to be doing that. Just the thought to drop it. Um, under goal three, um, numbers one, uh, one three, one, we're going to be doing that. Um, the develop, uh, develop and implement plans for, we, again, these things we're going to be doing. I don't know whether we need to have them in goals to remind them. And um, as far as uh, goal four, number four, uh, you hesitated and I appreciate that. I, I, what exactly would we going to the media? And I, I think it would be good for us to hear the plan before we initiate it. Uh, Which is this? I'm sorry. On goal four, as far as uh, four, four. Four, 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 the district will expand its oh, social, social media, media presence. presence. I'd like, I mean, oh. I don't know how to do it. I hear it from my kids. I hear it from everybody. It's very important to people. That's how they communicate, and I appreciate that. But I guess I'd like to see it and test it out on us. I think we, we have a wide variety right here on the board on, on how to receive it and how to deal with it. And I will be glad to send this to you, what I said. I know I'll give you a lot real quick. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Pierce? Yeah, my initial impressions were, were that of Mr. Hainer's in terms of limiting the things that we're already supposed to do anyway to um, hone in on the things that we want to do for this coming year. Um, continuations and, um, you know, again, those are things that um, perhaps should be somewhere already in our overarching goals. I think when we met in retreat fashion a year or two ago, it was emphasized to us that these should be specific so people know how they're going to achieve them. Mm -hmm. um, to make them too vague and too general, I think, is also a problem, too, because you don't know what evidence to give, right? Um, so in other words, you, with social media presence, I know it's just a placeholder, but like, what evidence are we going to show? Like, oh, we have a Facebook page, I yeah, guess. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but like, by when 
you know, how, how many uh, users are going to uh, like it, how many, you know, so we need to have some sort of measures, I think, built into some of these that, are, that aren't there yet, and it's just a draft. So I would love to meet in a retreat um, and, again, make this, instead of three pages, make this two pages. Instead of six sub-goals under goal two, make it three. Um, I'm all for consolidation here and trying to eliminate the things that we're already supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Dr. Allison okay. Abbey? Um, I had a couple of things. Um, I agree with the comments that I would like th to see things be made more measurable, um, specifically on goals 1-4 one, one, one and 1-5. One I'm concerned that Mr. Schlickman is not here, and he was the one oh, yes. who was the <laughs> special <laughs> proponent of these numbers, yes. so I'm reluctant to say. Well, they are drafts. Yeah, I know it's a draft, but still, I'm, I'm pointing out that his mm -hmm. opinion is, I think, especially important here, mm -hmm. and we don't have it right now. Um, but one, I've been trying to think about this because I hear Dr. Bodie's concerns that she wants to highlight the things that are important that we're doing that maybe don't fit as well into measurable SMART goals and stuff. And I'm wondering if there might be a way of splitting it into two things. And we have, instead of saying strategic in initiatives and having all these different things, mm -hmm. we have areas of attention, which are kind of the important things that maybe we're just progressing on or something. Mm -hmm. And then we have objectives, and those are very specific, measurable mm -hmm. number things. And <coughs> I don't know. We've had many discussions of how to present these, but I'm just feeling like there's kind of a part of the reason this ends up kind of messy is because we're really trying to do two different things in the same document, and it's not working really well, and I wonder if we want to split them up somehow. Mm -hmm. So, Great, that's thanks. All. Uh, Ms. Starks? Oh, and I like the idea of a retreat, too. Yes. A what? <laughs> a retreat. Oh. Retreat. Yes. I'll bake brownies again. <laughs> Obviously. Okay. Um, I think that one thing that might help is if um, we break this up into um, two parts, because if I compare these to what we did last year, we have a lot of continuing ones. So it might be possible just to have um, a list at the end of these goals that say we are also continuing to work on, because um, according to mine, uh, the only new goals on here under one is three, under two is three and six, under three is one, two, and five, and under four is four. All the rest are continuations, which is fine. I, I totally love goals that take a long time to do, but we might just want to say that. Like, we're, you know, in addition to these new things, mm -hmm. we have, this is the list of things that we're continuing to work on from mm -hmm. last year, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's valid to have those somewhere. But I also, I think it, it also helps uh, to get to what other people are saying, which is to reduce what we have in this document. So then that kind of combines both of those. Um, so that's just my suggestion. I mean, I think that all of these are important. I think it's always the hard part is that, you know, we're working on 100 important things and you have to mm -hmm. pick out some for the goals. And, and I think that that's what makes it difficult. But um, I, so I would just break them up that way um, and then uh, and I'm also in on a retreat. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Thamon. So a few thoughts. I, you know, most schools and school districts have multi-year goals, so I think it's just a question of figuring out what you can accomplish by June 30th, 2016, and defining it mm -hmm. um, in some of these. I, in goal two, I like um, what I see in one, two, three, five, and six. And I also think it says something about the district to highlight in the goals that we're going to, um, uh, <clears throat> you know, have more teachers taking retail training. I think it's a good thing uh, that we're going to make another statement publicly um, uh, in order to better meet the language acquisition needs of ELL students while maintaining their access to the general education curriculum. We will implement a program so that elementary teachers can attain dual certification in the teaching of ELL students in addition to their primary certification. I think it's a great, I think it should be in our goals and I like the fact that that's stated publicly. Um, you know, uh, the one I also really like the teacher leadership goal. Mm. That's a huge thing. I mean, it's a huge. I mean, we went through a two-year search for a principal of the high school because the edu you don't have enough people that want to go into leadership positions, and and there's other issues, but they don't want to go into leadership positions. So, if we can contribute to the training of uh, educators to become leaders, 
uh, that's a good contribution to the district and into the, to the profession. <clears throat> Goal four under number two, the district will support its administrators and teachers through professional development opportunities that are aligned to the needs of its staff, including instructional support and content knowledge, coaching, technology competence. It's kind of like everything you're already doing. Mm. So I don't know, my, my own reaction to that is, I'm not sure how necessary that is because I don't know how distinct it is. It's not that distinct. It's what you're doing, in which it's kind of the, unless it's unless something within that is new and different and unusual. Unless there's something specific, new and unique and different you're going to do in PD that you haven't done in the past. It's going to change the the way teachers teach. Um, then that should be in there. That's specific. Uh, <clears throat> I see the same thing under goal three, number four. Continue to support technology implementation as, as outlining the technology plan. Mm -hmm. Is there a way could we, we could be more specific? Is there something unique and different in technology we're going to do that's mm -hmm. going to impact the classroom, that's going to impact teaching and learning? Um, the other thing that I have been kind of pushing at my own uh, work is, is uh, trying to make sure that somewhere in the goals of an organization, there is a program evaluation goal. Um, mm -hmm that you're going to evaluate, I don't know, something. It's a lot of effort to evaluate programs, and you can't just say you're going to evaluate all programs, and sometimes you, you do well if you can evaluate one or two things. I don't know what they are. I really don't know. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah. But, but that's a really good goal to say we're going to evaluate. You, you don't even have to be specific. I don't, I don't well, in my own opinion, is you don't have to, we're going to evaluate one or two programs within the school district and give a report to the school committee by June 30th, 2016. I think it's really good to do. Um, for any organization. And I like them in the goals myself. And then the final thing is we have under goal one the, that's in our policy, you know, that's enshrined in policy, uh, the Arlington Public Schools will ensure that every graduate is prepared to enter and complete a post-secondary degree program, which we all push for. It's a great thing. Is there any way to measure that? I mean, do we, do we, we signed up for like the National Student Clearinghouse. Do we have data that shows what our graduates are doing? You know, we have not signed up for that program. It's not, it, I mean, it's probably. We, to cost money? Have we ever looked well, into we, that? We, pardon? Have you ever looked into that? And it's to the, the guidance department has looked on it. Yeah. it. You can, it's uh, It's fairly expensive. Yeah. It's only money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I don't know, I use that, I use that, we use that. So I, yeah. and I don't know, I don't know what, I don't know what we pay yes, for. Yes, it does exist <clears> and you, could, you can get data from that and yeah. I can explain. I would look I think, into this. I don't remember exactly what I meant, but I do remember talking about this, and it's like, oh, well, I don't know if we want to spend. No, but it measures, it measures where the student, oh. where your graduates are six years after graduation, mm -hmm. class by class by class. Well, no, I know. I, yeah. I know. Yeah. And it's really good. It'd be great data for, to, for the district to have. Mm -hmm. And it informs the curriculum. Mm -hmm. It informs what you teach. It's, it also gives you a sense, tells the community where our graduates are going. Anyway, well, so I added goals. Going. Sorry, We do Jill. know where they're going, but but I mean, but I mean, where they, they stay, stay, yeah. where, where they stay and get a, attain a degree, right. whether, they, whether they meet the meet the meet the overall right. goal. What percentage that start in their first choice stay there and graduate? Yeah. Right. Does but all that stuff is in that data. It is. I'll explore how much that costs. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. There you go. So. Uh, oh, um, Dr. Alsanthi. Can I make one more yes, quick please. comment? I just wanted to point out, we, we did, I'm looking at this um, that the diversity advisory mm -hmm. committee gave to us, and I think all of us are. It's just hard to, you're not you need hearing to much because we can't read this and that and this, and I'll put it in. We're not ignoring you. Yeah, so. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Okay, that's all. Great, thanks. Um, let me just add my own thoughts on this. Um, I actually think I disagree with the, need, the desire to shorten it. Um, and partly, but I think that what should be in here should be aspirational, should be something that we're reaching for. Um, so to the extent that things are, we're, that we're doing anyway are things that we're still pushing ourselves, it should be there. To the extent that we're just doing it <laughs> and it's not necessarily a reach, I would say maybe not. Um, but in a way, this is both a aspirational document and also a snapshot of the kind of efforts that are going on in the district. So that, so that we want, so that if we really are making a huge effort in something, for example, technology, mm -hmm. there should be some sort of representation of that effort, I think, in this document, even if we would do it anyway if we weren't there. <laughs> That's sort of how I, um, just to give a snapshot of sort of what's mm -hmm. going on in the district. Um, so yes, I agree that it's difficult to make 
particular line item changes in this kind of context given right and it's very hard to thing. do this, so we, it's a, yeah but i think it's also important for the uh, for the people listening to have a sense of what we're doing with the district goals and then understand that we're probably going to need a more informal we situation to. to really talk about some of these but i think it's an, i think it gives people a good idea of what our where our efforts are so actually i just want to add one more thing and then i'll get to um um, Dr. um hainer um so w one thing i'd be interested in is to hear from the school committee to see if there are any particular goals that the school committee has and especially i mean obviously we don't there are certain things that we can't achieve but things like communication we can be much more intricately involved and i'd love to see to have some sort of way that we can pass on our aspirational goals to somehow get incorporated into the conversation so mr hainer i heard three other members beside myself uh, in support of the idea of a uh, retreat. Therefore, I make a motion to uh, direct the superintendent to send out a doodle uh, for dates for a possible <laughs> retreat. Great, so. thanks. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Dr. Alison Ampe. Um, <coughs> all those in favor? Please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Thank you. It's an unanimous vote, so declare it. Um, so our next item on our agenda is superintendent report. Uh, do we want to, Mr. Hainer, you wanted to? Well, I'll wait okay, for Dr. Body to give me my moment in the sun. Or do you want me to do it up front? Yes. Okay. I would like to. To defer. To defer to Mr. Hainer. Okay, so part of the superintendent report um, that Dr. Bodie was going to address um, is about Arlington Eats and their initiative this weekend, and uh, Mr. Hainer will address it now. I want to remind you and uh, the community uh, that a community dinner and fundraiser to benefit Arlington Eats is happening at the Thompson School this Saturday, May 16th. There will be music, crafts, <laughs> games, food, and fun for the entire family from 4 to 8 p.m. The first 400 people to purchase tickets will receive one of the beautiful handmade pottery bowls that the students have been creating. There is a direct link in the superintendent's uh, most recent newsletter, or you can go to www.arlington-eats.org slash bowls. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Dr. Buddy? Yes. And actually, oh, thank you. <laughs> That's helpful. Oh, let there be light. Uh, let there be light. So, Actually, the, the first report I would like to also defer but this time to Dr. Chesson to talk um, about the tech plan for next year, uh, for sort of very specifically, I believe, around um, Addison. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bodie. Um, in February, I presented to the committee uh, the tech plan, and through the generosity of the Arlington uh, Town and the Capital Committee, um, we received funding for those items that we were intending to do this year. So I just want to briefly bring you up to date on that. Um, I will go into more detail on Audison, but just to let you know that at the elementary schools, we'll be replacing the oldest iPads that we have in the district, and those are um, right now at Bishop and Dallin. And we'll be shifting those older devices, um, which are still in working order, to the youngest grades where the highest functionality is not uh, necessary. So it's not like we're opening the door and throw them out. <laughs> um, and actually, we're adding another cart at bracket due to the higher enrollment at bracket. Um, for special education, we'll be replacing the <coughs> oldest iPads that are being used for assistive technology for special education students. It's our plan to do half of those this year and half of those next year um, should we um, receive the same generous amount of funding that we um, have this year. Um, I also just want to talk briefly about the high school. Um, we actually had a competitive grant process for the high school uh, based on the amount of money that we knew that we had uh, allocated for the high school for next year. And as a result, there are going to be pr uh, classroom sets of devices to six pairs of teachers who were selected by a, a competitive grant process. We are lucky that they're across all subject areas. So we have um, teachers at world language, social studies, math, language arts, um, and science. Uh, the grant process was open to all of the teachers in the high school, and these are the teachers that had the clearest vision of what they would, how they would transform their education and of their students. Um, I should say that there is a combination of both iPad usage and Chromebook usage at the high school. And finally, at Audison, um, and that's where uh, the largest amount of money will go this year. Um, we'll be expanding uh, the number of carts that we currently have in the 620s, 630s, and 640s. Uh, they currently only have one cart apiece to expand our one-to-one -one pilot. Um, this was based on, as we talked about in February, 
the detail that we got back from the um, pilot that we've been running for almost two years in the 610 cluster that they presented to you some, um, some weeks ago. Um, and we'll also be allowing sixth grade students to bring their own device if it matches the devices purchased by the sixth grade. And the reason we're doing, for the sixth grade, the reason we're doing that is because um, we don't want teachers to have the overwhelming uh, of having kids with one-to-one -one devices and then having three different kinds in the same room. Um, and I always draw it akin to when I first started working in uh, teaching mathematics and graphing calculators became common. Uh, it was fine if the kid had a TI-83, but if they brought in an 84, 85, or 86, it was difficult for me to deal with that in the classroom initially. So um, we've been having ongoing professional development. Um, the 610 cluster is taking everything that they know and sharing it with their teachers. There will be a meeting on Monday evening at 7 o'clock at Audison and all uh, fifth grade parents were um, informed by uh, emails that came directly from the principals of the elementary school as well as something from the superintendent's office today. And it was also um, out on the website as of last week um, for parents of incoming sixth graders who would like to hear more about the pilot and more about the BYOD program. Um, and then based on teacher input, uh, met with all the seventh and eighth grade teachers a number of times this spring, and they have asked and we will be receiving um, a set of classroom set of Chromebooks for each seventh and eighth grade cluster. So each grade will have a set of Chromebooks. Um, in addition, uh, they wanted to have one iPad cart for seventh grade and one iPad cart for eighth grade. Um, they would like to have this variety of devices because they want to begin to introduce students to both platforms. Um, and uh, it seemed like a, a logical um, way to go, particularly because of the uh, variety of devices that are used at the high school, and it gives students um, a broader technological background. And finally, we'll be replacing the oldest teacher devices in the district, and those are at Dallin and the Stratton School, and those teachers um, will also be providing devices. We have money set aside for those teachers uh, that will be taking new teaching positions and FTEs. Uh, Mr. Hanna. What's the determination of the defining old? It, it, does, it, does it lack capability? Uh, usually what happens, well I know with mine, is that you press the button to turn it on and it doesn't and then it, you press it again and then it might come on or it might wait till you press when, it a third we're time. We're not talking about an outdated operating system, we're talking about the, the physical aspects right of the Right now, no, but um, we met with the Ab Apple technical people about um, a week ago. Um, and we probably have a year to two years. <coughs> they will never cut us off on the operating system, but you would, they will, there will be updates that you would not be able to be, be, able, put, to, okay. be able to put on. Okay. So, um, it's you know. It's more the physical aspect is uh, right now. Yeah, our it, students it have done, off. yeah, have done an excellent job taking yes. care of um, items. So we have a, a greater number left than maybe other districts do. The, the level of damage that we've had is less than 1%. I mean, it's just amazing. The kids are taking really good care of the stuff. Yeah, I, use, you, I think students use these far more than adults do, and they wear out earlier. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was just concerned that the software we have is, You've said it. it. It won't be there to support. Be supported. Right. Thank the, you. The one. I'm sorry. The one other thing that I forgot is that we'll be starting to replace um, the some of them at Thompson. The one to one at Thompson. They are getting the highest level of usage, so we'll be starting to replace starting with fifth grade. And the plan would be that we re replace a certain amount every year, so that we would always continue to keep our investment at Thompson. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Any, uh, oh, sorry. I have a couple more things. Oh, no, I mean, anyone else, but on this, sorry. Okay. Well, actually, this is, a cons is um, something about technology. Just this May edition, for those of you in education, you're probably familiar with ASCD, which is the premier organization in the country for curriculum. And in May, they had um, an article on how to transform teaching with tablets. And it was written by... Um, Two people actually, I think one or two, it's the EdTech, which is um, a, local organ, a local company. But what was very interesting about this article, um, first of all, it talked about how you implement tablets and, and technology into schools. And the question posed was, uh, when you, before you purchase iPads, how, well, these are the kinds of questions a district needs to answer. How will learning be different? 
How will, te how will students improve as learners, as scholars, as citizens? And what will they be able to do two or three years from now, three to four years from now, um, after your iPad adoption? And basically I said, if you can't answer these questions, basically you probably should not go forward in making purchases. Um, so they said that the be this is a long article, and I, and I already sent you a link to it. The best technological integration tends to take place in schools created around a focused pedagogical vision. And then they point out that the Arlington Public Schools is, is a great example of how you best imp you begin and implement a technology program. And, and I give a lot of uh, credit to Dr. Chesson. In fact, they, they quote her in here. Um, and I'll read it to you. Um, uh, Dr. Chatson, explain to us the school shared vision. In the elementary schools, we are focused on preparing students for learning, self-regulation, and collaboration using the tools of the mind curriculum. In the secondary schools, we're focused on discourse reasoning from evidence. Um, <coughs> Self-regulated learning and reasoning from evidence are fantastic, focused areas for improvement. With these kinds of clearly established learning goals, it is much easier to define and measure how technology can support learning. Arlington's goals are good grain size as well. Capacious enough to rally a community, but focused enough to see measurable improvement for several years. And so I think it's really, uh, you know, we've done a lot of work been a very strong collaborative, and Laura's done a terrific job of leading this, but I do think the pace at which we've done this, how we've involved teachers, and I think if you heard the plan, we, we put out these opportunities for teachers to talk about their vision and how they would use them before we give them these new, the tablets or the Chromebooks or whatever it would be. So the, the implementation of our technology plan is firmly grounded in the vision for how we want to see learning in our district. And I, and I, 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 we couldn't have been, we were so surprised, but it's really great. So compliments. Thank you. The other piece of very good news we had this week is that um, in the annual rating of high schools, U.S. News and World Report came out, and um, Arlington High School was listed among the top 20 in um, Massachusetts. And I think that it's important to understand this isn't just simply about metrics about standardized tests, so that is certainly a component. Um, but their U.S. News and World Report's findings are based on student proficiency in English and mathematics as well as college uh, readiness. Student-teacher ratios are also in consideration. But what the, the quote is what I think is really important. A great high school must serve all of its students well, not just those who are college bound. It must be able to produce measurable academic outcomes to show it is successfully educating its student body across a, a range of performance indicators. So it's a, I, I could not be more pleased for the high school, but the thing that I would also say is that when a high school is performing well, it is not just the high school, it is the whole K-12 district because this is a collective effort to really um, improve teaching and learning and it's, it's really, it really shows. Now na nationally, this has gone up to I think it's 288 out of over 19,000 schools they looked at. So that's in the top 2% of all the high schools in the country, which is great. So wanted to share that with you. and. Just two other things. One is there has been a little bit of, we've heard the speaker tonight talking about Stratton, and uh, there was a little bit of confusion about the RFP, but I, I, I don't know if you saw my email regarding this, is that apparently the RFP went out with an early version of the plan, mainly so that the designer would be able to understand that this is something that's going to be in their scope of work. They're going to have to finally design, design the plan and do the bid documents. And so to give them a sense of the complexity of what we're looking at, that's why it was sent out. But the plan and discussion at capital planning 
was that all of the students at Stratton, other than the SLC program, are going to be in modulars so that we don't have to repurpose music and art rooms in the different elementary schools. Now, is the plan final? No. And we've, I've said that, you know, there might be, it may, it may end up being the plan, but it's certainly going to be reevaluated once the designer is selected. The RFP went out oh, in April. Um, the proposals are due, I think, the 21st, very next week. Mm -hmm. And then there's a process by which the design will be selected. And then that's the point when we start. And that's like the first order of business in the project is we've got to get the design accomplished. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to point that out. If, if I may. Sorry. Um, yeah. I, I sent this, asked for this document to be sent out to you. You just said that this piece of the RFP was a prior document. It didn't belong with this? No, I, I, I talked with the, the deputy town manager today about the process. They wanted, they really sent it out to give the designers an idea of what the scope of the work would be. Well, in the RFP itself, when you go to the town web page and you ask for RFP, mm -hmm. specific one on, on Stratton has both these documents in the one uh, PDF. In the RFP document under scope and services number nine, it specifically says, designed it to assist with specifications and bidding for modular classrooms as described in Appendix A, Option C. So these people are going to be coming into a bid for an Option C that is different from what we're talking about. No, but not very much, though. So. Well, the, uh, the problem comes that what we're, we're talking about is the design in the, the document of the layouts is these maps here and the specifics on it uh, on the pricing page is the option A. It's directing the bid maker to look at option C. Option C in its cost is $400,000 where option A is two million, option C, I mean uh, option B, option C is 1.8 and there's about $500,000 difference. My concern is that we never saw this if it was something that was never going to be used, this is what the, the bid people are using as part of their bidding. They're using this document combined with this as the bid, unless the town itself has made a mistake. And to make a change, a little bit I've learned on the Permanent Town Building Committee, you can always make changes, but it costs more once you've accepted a bid. The people that are bidding are using these two documents right now, and that's my concern. And we never, this was dated January 20th, 2015 and it talks about three options. I'm just concerned about communication, and once again, I find out about this from a parent. This, one, this, this document was for the Capital Planning Committee as part of their discussions. Um, I confirmed with the t Deputy Town Manager today that there was some discussion as to whether to include it or not, but they made the decision. This was a town decision, and um, they don't, they don't see that the, the, the problems you presented are going to actually be um, a concern for the person making the proposals. Well, the, if this went alone without this, as you say, it belong to capital planning, this specifically references this, the, the attached document. And that's, my, that's my concern. And, and the other part of my concern is that we should have at least seen this. I understand it's capital planning, but it deals with the cost. One of our pur purviews, which is budgetary, and our cost, it's a major cost. I know the town is dealing with it. It's not coming out of our it's specific not, budget. It's not ours. I understand that, but we actively supported capital planning in, in, in this. And in the good communication and the good rapport that we need, we have to be there. I, I hear what you're saying. I'm just nervous because when you change specs, the people that are bidding are looking at this. The, the responsibility of the designer is, is really more at the organizational level it, in terms of helping the design and also to do the bids. So wh whether you're looking at different options, it's, it doesn't change the responsibilities. It, it told them to specifically look at option C in their bid. That's what my concern is. It, so anyway, we're gonna, the designer will be chosen in the next couple of weeks, um, certainly no later than mid-June, and then we'll, we'll see where we go with this. 
So I am cognizant that I'm, first time I'm running a meeting, I'm already over scheduled, right. but I want to hear quickly last, from Dr. Okay. Alison Ampe, and then we'll, we'll keep going. I was just, yes. Mr. Hainer, did you say, did I hear you say option B cost four? I mean, 1.8 is what he said. I may have got the numbers mixed up. Yeah, that's because uh, I'm seeing it. C is 1.8. C is 1.8. 1. 1. B is actually the C, cheaper. C is <laughs> 1. One Option C, total estimated cost, 1.8. Okay. I, I made a mistake. Okay. I originally okay. said 400, and then I went yeah, back. Yeah, no, that's okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for clearing that record. options, but capital planning has allocated $2 million for the relocation, and there's an additional amount of money for transportation. Right. Okay, I just, $400. Oh, and last thing, yes, I just wanted for clearing that up. Thanks. to invite you to come next week on the 21st, um, school committee, to our teacher appreciation reception, which is an annual event in which we honor people who, have made, who are retiring, who have reached certain milestones, the 25th year, 30th year, 35th year, as well as teachers who made professional status this year. So you're all welcome. It starts at 3 o'clock at Addison. 3 o'clock at Addison. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Great. Thank you. Okay, so we have something quickly. We, um, we have the approval of the Arlington High School and Audison Middle School student trip to Japan. Do we have a presentation on that, or do, what do we have? Sorry. I would ask we Dr. table Allison that Effie. until Dr. Mr. Schlickman gets back. Okay, that sounds a great idea. Okay. So then right on time-ish, <laughs> we have a presentation of the Vision 2020 um, survey results <coughs> by Mike Stern and Julie Brazil. Thank you. I'm Michael Stern, a Vision 2020 Standing Committee member who worked on the uh, on drafting the survey questions. Uh, Julie Brazil is the chair of the Standing Committee. She's recovering from a bad cough and has pretty much lost her voice, hence giving me the opportunity to steal the limelight. <laughs> um, the annual town survey was mailed to all households in Arlington in January. Out of the 18,910 surveys mailed, we received 6,058 back, or 32 percent. You received the preliminary, preliminary data we shared with town meeting, and we're here to discuss your questions in a little more detail tonight. We asked demographic questions and some questions that uh, were conceived uh, with input from Dr. Bodie and uh, school committee members. Um, the demographic questions include precinct, length of residence, ages of household members, <coughs> and whether they have children in the Arlington Public Schools. Your questions informed the public about both the increased enrollment and the need to update the high school building and asked how much people thought they knew about the issues and then asked how they preferred to get the information about the schools. The report you got this week and submitted at town meeting is a summary of the basic information. The next step is to dig a little deeper in, into the data. For example, the combined answer to the question about how people like to get information tells us what communication methods people like or use. Overall, the top three answers for the town in total were town email, town website, and the advocate. In the report, we broke out the answers according to whether people have children in APS and the order changes. Um, folks who have kids, the number one uh, communication method would be school email, second, town email, third, school website. A further step would be to study whether length of residence, as we've had a big influx of uh, new folks into Arlington and the schools in the past years, <coughs> whether that changes the answers. That answer could help you focus on communication in ways that seem to work for the growing demographic of newcomers. Uh, thanks to Mr. Schlickman for inviting us here tonight. And uh, we can answer questions if, if you want us to drill down into certain things or uh, have I ideas on what you would like for us to uh, provide for some more data on. Uh, yes, Mr. Rainer. Do, do you folks have an ability to be on the town census to determine how many new people and how long they've been here? As yet, that might, I mean, that might be something for us that would benefit us. Kind of our trick. <laughs> when you arrived, how long you've been here in town. Uh, it might help other people too, politically, to, to find out 
what's going on. Uh, we, we all give uh, credence that the town's demographics are changing, but it would be nice to know when and how. Is it a continual change, increase with newer people and stuff like that? Yeah, um, actually, I've done some work on this, and I know that um, there's a lot of information in new voter registrations. Even though people might wait a year to register, they're, you know, it's not, it's not accurate, but there's, there's some nice information there. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, uh, have, Mr. Pierce first. Yeah. You may have already addressed this. And thank you for compiling this and presenting it. Um, it's very informative and it shows me that we have a lot of work to do in trying to share the story about the high school and about our increased enrollment pressures. Because it seems to be like a 75-25 split on the not aware side. Mm -hmm. So are, is this a comp compilation of those with children in the schools? And OK, so everyone Actually. is. It's oh, within yeah. these numbers. Right. We can break it all out. Yeah. Um, so is, that's really what we're here tonight is we'll make recommendations uh -huh. for the final report, but anything that would interest you, it's helpful for us to st start. Yeah, because I, I certainly don't want to be knocking on the same door three or four times no, to make not. the case, right? <laughs> so all of us. So, you know, whether or not um, people are more aware of these pressures with students enrolled in, in the schools as opposed to that not, mm -hmm. which I assume is the case. I'd love to see the, the breakout. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just get, sorry, um, Mr. Thamond? Well, I saw some encouraging, uh, I think I saw some encouraging numbers in the data because you, of the respondents, if I'm reading this correctly, uh, only 20% I uh, had children in the uh, Arlington Public Schools, 80% did not. But despite that, um, it, e either uh, over 50% were aware or somewhat aware of the increase in enrollment in the Arlington Public Schools, and um, uh, about 50% were aware or somewhat aware of the condition of the Arlington High School. So, you know, somehow, even though the majority of the respondents are not APS parents, they they, are, they seem to be aware of what's, you know, there's a vast majority that's aware of what's going on in the Arlington Public Schools. So they're reading The Advocate, they're hearing on the street, they're in a neighborhood where there's lots of kids. Um, so I saw some encouraging, I, I see some encouraging data in here in terms of, our aware, of, of the awareness the public has about the school system. Of course we need to do a better job. We had a very good conversation earlier about social media. The superintendent's going to be on Snapchat, uh, Snapchat <laughs> next I year. That. It's going to be very cool. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, but, you know, I, I don't think we're doing too badly. I really don't mm -hmm. think we're doing too badly in terms of connecting with the public because a lot of non parents seem to know what's going on, at least the, the data that I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. yep. Uh, wait, just, Mr. Hainer, was waiting for I'd, I'd like to see a breakdown of the age demographics on the responses to this uh, because obvious our message, mm. uh, it's going to be the same message, but it may be delivered in different vehicles or different ways mm -hmm. in inviting. If we, if, as Mr. Thielman said, if somewhat aware are my age, we right. have to approach them a little different than not if they're Mr. Pierce's mm -hmm. age. Yeah. You're not on Twitter? <laughs> I am. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Pierce? Yeah, I'm just curious about how many of these people actually vote. Because if, if <laughs> is that a I question? Know. I, I would love to know because they're going to eventually have to go to the ballot box and support some sort of money to, die, you know, to, to help our school uh, continue for another 100 years. My, my heart tells me that a lot of the people who've complete the survey probably do vote because yeah, that's I a imagine. whole extra voluntary step. But not in the last election. Right. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> no. but there's, it's, there's no way to know and I, I'm not sure we'd ask that question on the survey. Yeah. Why Are you not? also a voter? <laughs> is, it, do you vote? is it too personal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the kind of thing that might turn them off. Plus, you'd have to break it down by kinds of elections. There yeah. are people who vote in town elections. Right. Um, Don't vote. Uh, only or more than right. national because they're mad. Okay. Dr. Allison Appy? Um, if we have any further question or further thoughts on analysis or something, oh, can yeah. we send you them know. to you and just as suggestions, not as dictates yeah. or something? Great, thanks. 
So I'd say I, I am definitely interested in this, the Facebook response, which is smaller than I would have expected. So from casual conversations, I know that people I've met have been very interested in a Facebook page as a different way of giving information, so a more casual way, less formal than the superintendent's newsletter is what I've heard. So I'd definitely be interested in knowing are those people who do say yes to Facebook in sort of the parenting age? Because one thing that this doesn't maybe can't capture is there's a lot of parents who are really interested in what's going on in schools who don't yet have kids in the public school mm -hmm. system because they have two-year-olds. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are on the playgrounds. They know about the high school. They're worried about it. I keep actually re reassuring them, you got a two-year-old. You're probably, you know, by the time that kid gets oh high school, God willing, we will get something done. <laughs> but, um, but, um, but there is, you know, a lot of interest in town, not just from people who are, have um, kids in the Arlington Public Schools. So. I think it'll venture to guess the Facebook ones are are younger. Are you and but it's just non Facebook on my age. But it'd be very interesting to, to know more about it, <laughs> um, Dr. Allison Epi. The other thing is that it may have had to do with how exactly how the question was phrased because it says please indicate your preferred methods to receive our information from right. the APS and given that we Good don't point. have a Facebook page most people are not likely to put down I mean they have right. to kind of extrapolate yep. um, right. right that's so a good point I or it may not be their first choice but it's their second they'd still go there yeah 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 that's a good point just that's a good point so. anyone else do you have any comments well, I saw encouraging data, but I also was a little bit surprised that it's roughly in the 50 percent of people who, who know about enrollment growth or know about the needs of the high school, and it just it just says that we need to do more outreach. And um, I guess that is the challenge for us: is how to do that. So that's something I was been thinking about ever since I read it, uh, read the report. But then, but then, as I mentioned earlier, when I, when I thought about what we were trying to do next year, because a lot of districts now have Facebook pages, and um, you know, given all the things we've been doing, it hasn't been a priority, but that's something we're going to do next year. And now I thought, well, is that effort worth the effort? But maybe we'll, we'll try it and see. Mm -hmm. I think that we can get some kind of, um, I think we can get some, some idea of how many people actually go to that page, so that might be helpful too. Right. Okay. Thank you. Great. Very Thank much. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, are we on consent agenda, or do we? Yep. We can we can still go and then come back to and then the come back to the. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I might need help. Let's see if I can do this right. Um, so I should read this. Read the whole okay. thing. Read so the whole thing. all items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests, in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Okay, so what do I do now? I'm, I should go through. Read, the read, items. Yep. Yep. read through other items. Okay, yep. thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so first one, uh, approval of warrant uh, 15157 dated for April 30th, 2015, in the amount of 1 million, is that 1 million? Yep. 37,704 and 75 cents, I believe. Approval of minutes, none. Appro approval of Ida Robbins scholarship to the top two students of Arlington High School with the highest GPA. Approval of the E. Nelson Blake <coughs> Award to the top 10 students with the highest GPA. The recipients will remain confidential until June 4th, 2015, Arlington High School Awards Night. So moved. Second. Second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? This is a unanimous vote, and I so declare it. Um, subcommittee and lays and reports. Uh, so I'll just go through them. Uh, special study group on superintendent evaluations. Mr. Hainer. Uh, I'm in the process of sending the survey and working with Mr. Uh, good to set up. Uh, I asked uh, Ms. Fitzgerald to just check with the superintendent of the ones that the superintendent supervises so we can get the list of Mr. Good and I'll report back the next meeting. That should be accomplished. Great. Uh, the warrant committee. I signed the warrant. Everybody got paid, I think. Great. <laughs> <laughs> good. Uh, policy and procedures. Mr. Pierce. 
Uh, we just had a meeting tonight, um, and we got through uh, the revised uh, Family Medical Leave Act policy, as well as a new policy on uh, parental leave, which uh, the Commonwealth, it's a relatively new law. Um, we're going to have those ready for first read at our next meeting. Um, there are just a couple um, uh, wording pieces that we need to attend to. And we also discussed uh, student discipline policies uh, located in file J, JIC, and we talked about uh, what we we're going to do um, for uh, the, this coming school committee session. We talked a little bit about uh, the walk to school policy um, located in file E and addressing that, inviting people um, on the uh, safe, safe Walk to Schools Task Force to come and join us at a meeting mm -hmm. and discuss what they would like to see in revisions to that policy. In addition, um, I don't think we're ready to report exactly what we're going to do for school committee session 1516, but uh, we're on that and we, the policy says that we should report by our meeting in June, so that is the plan. Mm -hmm. We're going to meet on June. What was the day that we selected, the first June week? June 2nd? June 2nd. At 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, budget, Ms. Allison Embry? Um, Dr. Arson, sorry. Nothing to report. Okay, great. Um, facilities, uh, Ms. Starks? Uh, the facility subcommittee will have a special meeting at Stratton on Tuesday, 26th at 6.30. Uh, our focus for this discussion will be to get as much information about portable classrooms out to parents, um, take their questions, um, hopefully we might even have a modular vendor in attendance mm -hmm. um, and the meeting is planned to run for an hour so hopefully we'll see a bunch of people there and we'll get a lot of people's questions answered great uh, community relations that's me um, we had a meeting um, I'm trying to remember when it is sorry when was that uh, a couple Last days week? ago what days ago um, <laughs> what the, May 7th thank you um, actually just uh, Ms. Starks and myself in attendance um, it was a very loose but I think productive meeting where we discussed the kinds of things that we'd like to see in the district. Um, some ideas about the dashboard, uh, some ideas about school website and who to reach out to. One of the ideas was to reach out to the current website designers at each elementary school to sort of get their insight to see what's worked for them, what hasn't. Um, some concern about who updates the information, certainly Things have to be updated at the administration level and the school level. Um, and we talked about the possibility of initiating public conversation, so not, not just a presentation, but more of a open conversation about some important issues. And two of the issues that were discussed were, um, we thought we shouldn't have too many of these. We have to have only a few and advertise them well in advance and with multiple modalities. Um, one, possible, one question is on class sizes and facilities. Seems to be a burning issue for people and something on testing. Uh, but our next step is to have another meeting. Um, we were having a very informal meeting now, but we definitely need to invite Dr. Bodhi to the next meeting to, because we're throwing around a bunch of things that we need sort of more input on. Mm -hmm. uh, what? Accountability. Yes, so that's actually not on here. <coughs> oh, it is. Oh, I skipped over you. <gasps> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, there may be a message there. I have to think no, about no, I'm that. Sorry. <laughs> like, where, where? No, no, I'm so, so sorry. Um, Reflect on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was reading it through. Sorry. I'm sorry. You know, I'm not I, I apologize. At all, I apologize. I, 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 I'm sure I'll um, district accountability. Yeah, district thank you. Oh, thank you, Dr. Yes. Seuss. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I have no report. <laughs> but, but. <laughs> We're trying to schedule a meeting. Okay, great. To talk about an important an issue that's been raised. Okay. So I just wanted to say that. So. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm before we go, you know, before we go to and every, everything else here, I do think, even though Mr. Schlickman isn't here, I think we have to address the trip to Japan because mm. they need a yeah. vote I and they have to go, and they're going in a few weeks. Right. So okay. I move approval of the trip to Japan. Second. Any discussion though? Is there any? No. Thanks for one thing. Actually, you could probably take the vote. I just wanted to tell about people about the scholarship. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, so oh, that's uh, let's do this first, I think, and then we'll go back to that. Um, any discussion about the field trip? It's a big field trip. Do we, is that no, uh, yeah, the only question? I, I just have. I think I, it, my annual concern. If it's a school-sponsored activity, I, I just wonder how we have only one. You know, 
it, there's a cost factor on scholarships and stuff like that. But students that need to go, we have activities and stuff like that. We <coughs> always provide. We don't limit it. And I, 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 I'm just concerned about it. I, I don't know a solution. I don't have a solution. 2,300. Yes, I understand <laughs> that. I mean, um, everyone in the world would go uh, if we opened it up to everybody. But it's just well, something I, I, I think we need to be aware of. That's all. Okay. Do we know uh, how many are going? 15, right? Is it? <coughs> maybe 16 now. now. Okay. Was there a number? Um, I thought there I was. But what I can well, say is that it's sort of in a gray area, this trip. It, it is school sponsored, but it is also sponsored through the uh, Sister City Committee. This is part of that initiative. We have the students coming from Japan here in the spring. We had 25 of them coming. And this is Arlington goes over there and they do homestays and you know get get a chance to spend time with their families and learn about the culture of Japan. And I think Yeah, I went. I was yeah, a yeah. chaperone one year. Um, it was awesome. <laughs> My daughter went. It's an it's an everybody it's says amazing. it's an awesome trip. It is. I it, think that the best part expensive. is actually the fact that you stay with a family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, because that really I think you don't learn as much as you do just being part of everyday life, and that was really mm -hmm. so. It's a it's an amazing trip. They do a great job. They show them all over the place. Um, I was quite blown away by it. Right, and I think it's been spotty as to whether we've had this trip approved by the committee, but the two, sh the two main chaperones are Arlington Public School teachers. So I thought this would be important, and I think all but one student on the trip is an Arlington Public School student. There is one that is a resident. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, j I just want to, well, I, I won't say who the donor was because uh, the, um, they would prefer to be anonymous, but we had a very generous um, offer of a complete scholarship for a student to uh, participate on this trip. And we went through a process uh, to identify the scholarship recipient. Um, this person has been notified, and everybody, and of course, Perfect. is just thrilled. So I, I think that but the reason I'm bringing it up is just such a generous thing for someone in Arlington to do. And it's again talks a lot about mm -hmm. who Arl what who Arlington is, yeah. and, and uh, so we're going to have another participant that we wouldn't have had otherwise. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, more comments. I'll, on? I'll wait till is after still the vote. I'll wait till okay. after the vote. Okay. So there's motion on the table to approve the trip at the high school and the middle school level. We've had a second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed? No. no. An unanimous vote. Okay. Uh, yes. I'd like to ask the committee uh, to form a subcommittee, uh, real short, to review executive uh, session minutes. We haven't done that, I think, for two years. We have a backlog. We have a responsibility to clear that log. Uh, I'm willing to volunteer. Let's, could, could we just have the policies and procedures subcommittee look at it when they meet? <laughs> I'd, I'd remind uh, <laughs> you that it's, it, we, we spent the last time two or three meetings a <laughs> uh, couple of hours each time. So unless you're willing, uh, he's, he's trying to stick you with it. Okay. Well, since I'm not on that committee, I we thought it was yeah, I know. <laughs> accountability. Okay. So I, I, I would recommend, um, I'd like to make a motion at this time to establish the subcommittee. Uh, I, it's, it's done in executive session. Okay. Uh, and it's just sitting there going through volumes. So it, if we have a subcommittee, do we need to come up with members tonight or just to establish I would ask, it? I would ask to have volunteers do it. I will volunteer. Okay. Okay, so we, I should be at least one other person. Motion to establish the subcommittee. We need a second for the motion, right? Yes, we need a second. Second for I'll the motion. Second. I'll second. Okay, Ms. Sark seconds. Um, I guess all those in favor of establishing the subcommittee. Aye. 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 No, so it's enthusiastic it's about that. <laughs> you know, none of us want to volunteer. <laughs> you get to, since Mr. Uh, signing is here, ourselves you get to up for more work. I think, I think people are interested. Should you know send their submissions to the chair. <laughs> Yeah, we, we got, I don't want to. Oh, yeah, okay. So we, we, we're not going to choose tonight who's no, on the committee. Well, Whoever's interested. Excuse me. Just to clarify, uh, Mr. Thielman, are we giving the chair the authority to appoint? Because this is something we need to get done and bring before this board to approve. Uh, it, 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 I should have mentioned this six months ago. But I apologize for that. So if, right. so if you're interested, send something well, no, to Paul. There's a policy we'll deal with you, it next meeting. There's a policy on how you appoint subcommittees. So he would have to come here and say that these are the people okay. who do them. Right? Right. right. Yeah. I mean, how okay. else are you going to do it? Okay. So, so 
when Mr. Slickman comes back, we'll tell him there's a new subcommittee created. He's going to receive applications or, or people submitting their names yeah. or other people's names. <laughs> yeah, everybody send somebody <laughs> else's name. Um, okay, and, uh, and, and, and come back to us. Okay, so um, at this point, um, we have announcements. There's a, na a time for announcements. Yes. Um, any announcements? Miss Stark. Some announcements. Um, so uh, this Saturday, uh, on the Route Two side of Spy Pond, is the cleanup mm -hmm. uh, for that. Uh, that's through Vision 2020 um, from nine to one o'clock on Saturday. So um, if anybody is so inclined, come and join me. I'll be there uh, along with the Vision 2020 people. Um, and I have a question. Um, my son is graduating, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know that it's Paul who gets to hand out the. I was hoping I could talk to somebody about possibly giving my son his Does he want diploma. that? <laughs> and I, I don't know if he wants it or not. It so moved, matter. approved. So I don't know how we, how we go about doing that. He only gives out half of so you, Dr. Jane can give you that slot, too. Yeah. It's done. You okay. Oh, right. So whoa. if I show up, I, do, I know I have to be up front. So good. I think I sent you that, right? Okay. All right. Good. All mm -hmm. right. That's it. I just want to make sure. One other thing, if I may. Mm -hmm. I'd just yes, like Mr. to remind the committee, uh, going along with graduation, uh, Karen sent a, a notice if we're going to attend, right. uh, we need to let her know as part of it. So if, just to remind everyone. Right. May I add to that? Mainly it's for caps and gowns. Yes. Yes. Right. we got to order caps order and gowns. The... Right. Okay, great. Are we so, ready to go into executive, executive session? session? Yeah. Okay, so I should read this, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. okay, to conduct strategy session in preparation for negotiation oh, with this. Union <laughs> yes. A. Is beautiful. Uh, we formed a new subcommittee, by the way. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, you <laughs> You're the chair. I, I, I figured I was in trouble. Uh, subcommittee to uh, review the minutes of the executive sessions. Oh, okay. Um, right. People are going to like email you if they want to be So on. we're about to enter into executive session. Do you want to take it over? Okay. Great. Um, I'd like to entertain a motion to con uh, enter executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with union and or non-union personnel or contract negotiations with union and or non-union, which if it, it held in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect, and to discuss strategy with respect to uh, co collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. So, so moved. Moved. moved by Mr. Hayner, seconded by Mr. Thielman. A roll call, Mr. Hayner. Aye. Mr. Aye. Pierce. Aye. Dr. Allison aye. Ampey. Aye. Mr. Starks. Mr. Thielman. Aye. Dr. Seuss. Aye. And the chair votes aye. It's a unanimous vote. Thank you. <laughs>